All right, here we go again. I survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft Skyblock. But real quick, before we get into the days of this video, I just want to say I'm sorry about the sound of my voice in this video. I'm recovering from actually getting it back from having a really bad cold. So uh, yeah, if I sound weird, that's the reason why. And also, if you enjoyed the video at any point, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing because it's greatly appreciated and it really goes a long way. Anyways, on with the video. Alrighty, so on day one, on my first day on this tiny island suspended above a never-ending void, considering I didn't have many options of things to do, I started digging up the top two layers of dirt to have everything nice and flat. And once all that was done, I chopped down the tree and patiently waited for a sapling, and once I had acquired said sapling, uh, I planted it down and got to work on building a cobblestone generator. But whilst working on it, I must have decided to myself that hardcore skyblock wasn't going to be challenging enough, and threw myself in the lava accidentally, and well, things were almost over on day one. And to top it all off, I was starting to get hungry, so I couldn't regen. Anyways, after that incident, I got to work on mining some cobble so that I could actually expand out the island a little bit. Now, I'll explain to you my idea for this island is I wanted to make an area kind of look like a, a main square in the middle, okay, surrounded by staircases in a square-like fashion all around it, kind of like a big square bowl. Um, and then on those staircases, there'll be little platforms that have farms and tree farms and whatever the hell in them. And I'm 100% sure that I'll stick with that idea and never change it. After my little expansion, I replaced all the dirt around the cobblestone generator with stone and started on a little wheat farm that would hopefully grow quickly because I did not want to stay as vulnerable as I am right now. After getting my one seed planted, it was getting dark, so I got to work on mining cobble all night because, I mean, what else is there to do? Th there's nothing here. By the morning of day two, I'd mined quite a bit of cobble, so I got to work on making it into slabs and placing it all down until I was satisfied on how big our main island was, and then I started work on mapping out the staircases leading to the upper layer. And oof, this was going to take a lot of cobble. After placing the slabs down as high as I needed them to be, I moved the sapling to a better place and then secured a small area around my cobblestone generator so that I would be protected somewhat when night came if things decided to spawn on the island because it's slightly bigger now. But uh, yeah, I know it looks really bad for the minute, but don't worry, it's temporary. Ooh, and I also made myself a glowberry farm and chopped a bit of wood down from my newly grown tree. But then it began getting dark, so I went and hid inside my little bunker, mining cobble all night again. And hoping to have a skeleton spawn so that in the morning it'll burn up and I can use its remains for bone meal so that I can feed myself. But well, I didn't really have any luck with that. However, when I left my hidey hole in the morning, I uh, saw one glowberry had grown overnight. I was extremely happy to see it because now that meant that I was one step closer to full health. So I harvested it and ate it and then chopped down the last piece of wood from the tree hoping to get an apple. Whilst waiting for the tree to decay, I expanded the staircase a little bit. But uh, when I went back to the tree, all I got was a load of saplings. So I planted them down and got back to work on the stairs. I ended up making a lot of progress on them and then started to realize how big this build was actually going to be. However, I might not even make it to finishing the first layer of stairs if I don't get some food soon because, well, I can't even sprint anymore and had no no way of getting food except waiting around. So with that in mind, I returned to my cobblestone box and mine cobble for the rest of the day, hoping that tonight a skelly would spawn and burn in the morning so that I could finally get some bone meal for my farm. And finally, at some point during the night, a skelly boy came up to my box and I quickly dispatched it, getting one bone for all my troubles. On the morning of day four, I cautiously left my house to find an enderman, a spider, and the remains of two skellies. Now I had three bones that I made into bone meal and used on the farm. After growing some crops, I went out and made myself an infinite water source because I could and they're very useful. Anyways, after that, I went and made my wheat into bread and ate it, but I was still a little bit off of healing, so I also chopped down a tree in hopes of apples. And finished off the first layer of the staircase, and I'm not going to lie, it was looking pretty good so far. After the layer was done, I made a furnace and smelted down some wood that I could use to make some torches to help the tree grow at night. Okay, so we're four days in, and we really don't have much stuff that we can do right now except mine cobble. So, listen up. My first goal in this 100 days is to make a mob grinder to help speed up the process of, well, basically everything. But first, to do that, we need a lot of cobble. So, I spent the rest of day four and the entirety of day five mining this godforsaken block so that I had enough to make the mob farm. Finally, by the morning of day 6, I gathered enough cobble to start on the farm. Now, I just went for the basic standard layout design of a mob farm because I don't need anything fancy. This would work perfectly considering there's no other land around for mobs to spawn on. Anyways, by day 7, the structure of the farm was built, but I still needed a lot of wood for the trapdoors inside. And also on day 7, I grew my wheat and finally regened. After almost a week on two hearts, I felt strong again. 
So strong, in fact, that I attacked a skelly, but it's all good, he was one hit anyway. After dealing with a skelly boy, I used his remains to grow a tree and chopped it down. And whilst waiting for more trees to grow, I got to work on removing the awful looking structure that I'd been cowering in nights previous. And I also moved the cobblestone generator to a new place temporarily so that things weren't as cluttered. And when it got dark, I built myself a tiny little hut next to it and mined the night away again in hopes that some trees would grow by morning. And on the morning of day eight, no trees had grown. Even after I killed a skelly and got six bone mill, still no trees. And then, to top it all off, I went to try and go up my mob spawner and ended up breaking half my farm. So I was really not having a good day. Anyways, I went up and placed down all the trapdoors that I had that wasn't many, but hey, it's a start. I also went and placed water in all the spaces that push mobs down, but ended up messing up and waterlogging a slab that then caused my farm to be ruined again. So I decided enough was enough. I went down and removed all of the dirt so that I could make a better little farm without losing my crops every two seconds. And now, yet again, I know this looks bad. Don't worry, it's temporary until I can expand some more. But to do that, I kind of need wood. But I'm using wood for trapdoors and I barely have any wood in the first place. You see the dilemma here. Also, a tree grew and ended up with eight more trapdoors. So that was, that was pretty good. I then went round and planted a few more saplings because this wood thing was taking way too long. I then decided to spend the night in my little hut just AFK because I really didn't feel like mining any more cobble right now and I really just wanted these saplings to grow. And well, day nine was a much better day. There was immediately already one tree grown, so I chopped that down and made it into trapdoors and then decided to go around scavenging the sides of my island to see if any bones had been dropped. There wasn't any, so I decided to head up and place my trap doors, and by the time I came back down, there was another fully grown tree for me. I really think that my luck's starting to come back here. Anyways, I chopped the tree down and decided to work on the second layer of staircase whilst waiting for more trees to grow. And sure enough, after doing the staircase for a little while, two more trees had grown. That I then promptly chopped down, and now we only need 14 more trap doors. After a while of waiting around for more trees to grow, I decided to make myself a fishing rod, but I don't really think I had a big enough body of water to catch anything, so I kind of just put it in the chest to use later. And then I realized that there was four more islands surrounding my main island. There was one with a jungle tree on, there was one with a spruce tree, there was a mushroom one, and I think there was a swampy one, but I couldn't really make it out. Anyways, I decided that I'd start a bridge over to the swampy one first thing in the morning, so I, uh, I spent all night mining again. And in the morning, I set out carefully bridging my way over the never-ending void to our first new island. And well, when I got over there, it really didn't have anything. In fact, the only things that I didn't have that were on this island were vines and lily pads, so not really anything I need right now. So that was kind of disappointing. Anyways, I returned back to my island and grabbed the last pieces of wood that I needed to make the final trap doors for the mob farm, and boom! Just like that, we now have a fully working mob farm, so at least one good thing came out of this day. And I actually ended up spending most of the night just camping out the farm. On the morning of day 11, I tended to my farm, made myself some food, and then went around chopping down all the trees so that I could start work on the second layer of our island right here. Oh, and I also took a couple swings at the mob farm because why not? Anyways, I worked on building out the island for the rest of the day, so while this cinematic shot is playing, let me tell you my plan for this first wooden layer. You see, it's five blocks wide, so in the middle of that, all the way around all four sides of the island, I can plant trees that will then become my tree farm, and I've not seen many tree farms that are built in like a square form of this. I don't know if anybody's doing it, probably not, it's kind of stupid, but either way, that's what we're doing. But yeah, that's my plan for the second layer, and then the third layer will have something else on it. I'm not too sure what it is yet, but anyways, after burning through all my wood, I spent most of the night growing and chopping trees so that I could finish the expansion tomorrow. But then the phantoms came, so I went and hid in my little hole again until I realized that I had enough string to make a bed, and finally, on night 11, I went to sleep for the first time. As soon as I woke up on day 12, I got straight back to finishing off the second lair, and after all the wood was placed, I went round strategically and precisely placing the dirt perfectly spaced out so that it would look even on all sides. And finally, by the morning of day 13, the second layer of the island was done, and we finally have a nice looking tree farm. And also now, the middle area of the island was no longer overcrowded with trees and dirt. After all that was done, I smelted down some wood into coal and went around placing torch everywhere so that no mobs would spawn outside of my spawner. After placing down a load of torches, I went and killed all the mobs in the grinder when I noticed that I had two witches in there. And you see, I need one of these to get a villager later down the line. So I began the tedious process of capturing one. And well, it was extremely annoying and scary at the same time. But eventually, I managed to separate one from the rest of the mobs in the spawner. And now all I needed was a zombie villager and a golden apple. But poppers, I hear you ask, how will you get such an item in Skyblock? Some off-camera technique, maybe? Some secret nobody knows about? 
No, I I'm just going to go in the nether and, and, and make a gold farm. It's that simple. But that job's for later, because right now, I just want to farm out this spawner and try and get some better armor to drop. Oh, and I also had an iron sword drop whilst getting the witch separated, so uh, yeah, that was pretty nice. Anyways, some mob killing later, and I didn't really get any better armor. However, I did find a potato that I then made into a lot more potatoes, which would now become my main source of food. And after I harvested them, I went to bed. And on day 14, I woke up and I made myself a smoker to help the cooking part of these potatoes go a lot smoother. After cooking a few of them, I got to work on sorting out and organizing all my storage, because everything was just crammed into one chest, and it was really triggering me because I am a neat freak when it comes to storage in this game. Anyways, after my super tidy, I got to work on expanding the island a bit more because, well, I had some leftover cobble and, well, I may as well use it. Now, I didn't get too much progress done because this place is getting kind of big now, but hey, progress is progress at the end of the day. And on that topic, by the time I was done expanding, it was the end of the day, so I went to bed. Okay, now, you remember as I mentioned that I wanted to make a gold farm earlier, and, well, I was planning on making it later down the line, but I realized that gapples could possibly save my life if something goes really bad. So, I decided to start gathering all the resources that I would need to make a somewhat fast and efficient rudimentary gold farm. So, for the next three days, I mined cobble and chopped trees non-stop until the end of day 17, when I had enough resources to start work on the farm. Oh, and I also got my first iron ingot from a zombie as well, so that was quite cool. So, on days 18 to 22, I made myself a nether portal, and now you may be wondering how I lit the damn thing, but that's okay, let me explain. I used my humongous brain that we all know I have, obviously a joke, but I used lava and wood to light it, and then boom, we were now in the nether. But there was also a second portal in here, which I've never seen before, but I guess it's just part of the map. Anyways, the chest down here had a fire charge in it, so I used it to light the second portal and learned that you cannot mine a gold block with a stone pick. I don't know why I thought you could. Uh, but anyways, after that incident, I made myself a little platform and started work on the gold farm that would hopefully work first try. And well, they took a little bit of encouragement to jump off, but oh boy, was this thing efficient. However, it was very scary having like 30 pigmen to try and kill you. Anyways, after having a few of them commit no longer part of the living realm, I collected their remains and returned home to make myself a shield, and then headed back into the nether to secure a little base around my portal. Just so that if some did survive the fall, then they couldn't get to me as easily. Oh, and I also lowered the platform in which the pigs drop onto and die by two blocks, just to make sure that as many died as possible, even if they were wearing armor. And, well, this just made the farm even better. I mean, just look at this thing. Now, the odd pigman can hit me if I'm not careful, but... If I, like, keep my distance and stuff like that, this is the easiest source of gold ever. I mean, especially if there was a hopper system underneath as well, but unfortunately we don't have that luxury right now, so, uh, yeah. After a while of looting them, I went home, and it was night, so I went to bed. And on day 23, I woke up feeling very, very good about things. I mean, we now had a mob farm and a gold farm, and it felt pretty good to finally start getting some good materials. And when I say good materials, I mean good for Skyblock. Anyways, I started to smell down my golden swords into nuggies, and then crafted the nuggies into ingots, which I then used to make myself some golden apples. Now, I know there aren't many of them, but don't worry, I'll spend a while in the gold farm later to, to make more. But for now, my objective is to get a zombie villager and another witch, because mine despawned, sadly. So, I spent the rest of the day just swinging at the mobs in the spawner, hoping to get one of the two spawn. And, well, after a while of killing things, I did indeed get another witch to spawn that I then quickly trapped again, and now all I needed was a zombie villager. In the process of waiting for one to spawn though, I ended up finding a second witch, and uh, got two more iron drops from zombies. But finally, there he was, my zombie villager. I quickly freed him from the death pit, and then trapped him in a boat, built a roof over his head, and got to work on making the witch throw a potion of weakness. But that was a lot easier said than done. You see, they don't throw them that often, and when they do throw them, you need to be less than three blocks away from the witch when they throw them. But here's the kicker. They can also throw potions of harming that will deal three hearts of damage. So it's very, very risky, but it is really worth it. So I sat there and I tanked potion after potion after potion until finally I got hit with a potion of weakness and gave the zombie a golden apple. And then I went to bed, because this man's gonna need a while to cook before he turns back into a normal villager again. So whilst waiting for that, I took a few swings at the mob grinder, and, well, I saw this skelly boy with diamond booties. This man had hella drip, and I didn't actually know they could spawn with them on, so uh, I killed him, but sadly, no diamond boots for me. So, I decided whilst I'm waiting for Mr. Villager over there to cook, I may as well be productive. So, I decided to make some more progress on expanding the island some more, 
Until finally, I got the achievement for curing a villager, so I uh, rushed over to see him and just look at this beautiful specimen. Mm -mm, I love him, and therefore, his name shall be Plooper. Plooper the Great. He shall become my armorer from here on out. But the, the only problem with that is I need a blast furnace, and well, I only have two of the five iron needed. So you know what that means, right? I'm mindlessly slaughtering hordes and hordes of defenseless mobs until they drop me the loot that I'm looking for. Oh, but wait, there's another zombie villager. Let me just put him in a boat. Oh, wait, no, I can't because Sweeping Edge has done what it does best. Absolutely nothing. Anyways, it's fine because I got another one to spawn and uh, trapped it in the nether accidentally. So I, I don't know what is going to happen with that one. But yeah, I chilled at that grinder all day and night, and I didn't get one single iron ingot. So then I started thinking, is there any other way to get them in Skyblock? And the only way I could remember was piglins. Piglins can trade them, so all I need to do is stack up on gold, and I literally have a farm for that, so... The iron problem is solved, right? So I rushed to the nether with two goals in mind. I wanted to collect as much gold as possible and trade for as much iron as possible. Also, when I got there, I killed the zombie villager because it wasn't worth my time trying to cure him and bring him back. But anyways, my goal was to get a load of gold and to catch a piglin in a boat and then use them to trade with. But well, that was easier said than done. So after about 20 minutes of piglins dying for random reasons when they hit the boat, I realized that you can't actually get in a boat by falling, I'm pretty sure. So I decided to go and make some hay bales instead. And well, would you look at that? They worked first try. And I got started with trading straight away. And after trading like 40 something gold, I actually ended up with 65 iron nuggies that got made into seven iron ingots. So that's two more than I need anyway. So overall, this plan worked out pretty successfully. Anyways, I headed back home to start smelting down some of the stone to craft my blast furnace that I then crafted and placed down to give this man a job, and then I realized that I'd forgotten the biggest thing when it comes to trading with villagers. I'd forgotten about emeralds. The literal only currency in the game just slipped my mind. You see, I'd need emeralds to trade for armor. So the entire point of the blast furnace was pointless right now. So I just really quickly made a composter and made him a farmer so that I could actually get some emeralds. So poppers, was that entire time in the nether a big waste of time? Well, no, because I still need a blast furnace for the second villager, so don't worry, we will get use out of it yet. Anyways, after harvesting some crops and trading with the villager, it was getting dark, so I called it a day. On days 29 to 30, I worked on grabbing more cobblestone to expand the island a little bit more so that things were a little more open. And by the end of day 30, all the stairs were finished, and I had now made a start on one of the sides of our new livable area. Okay, so next up, I wanted to branch out to some of the other islands to see if they had anything of use on them. So I start out by heading over to the sprucey snowy island and decided to make my bridge out of wood because then when I'm done, I can just burn it down afterwards and it wouldn't just chill there being a cobblestone like eyesore forever. And I mean, if you ask me, that's a pretty genius idea. However, I never burnt them down. Anyways, I got over to the island and well, it had a pumpkin and some snow in it. So I decided to gather up all the snow and maybe make a snow golem later so that I could have like an army of them to defend my island. And I also noticed that there was an amethyst cluster or geode or whatever they're called just chilling at the side of the island. But I really wasn't interested in getting anything that he had to offer me. So instead of going and looting that, I patiently waited for a sapling from the spruce tree. And well, I never got one. So I headed back home, put all the stuff from the island in a chest and then headed over to the mushroom island next. But before setting off, I I grabbed my bed to take with me because it was starting to get dark and I really did not want to get stranded over there with phantoms or something attacking me. Anyways, I got over to the island and it was just covered in mushrooms, so I, I placed my bed down and went to sleep. And on day 31, I harvested the mushrooms and some dirt and then I returned home to store some stuff away. And to get to work on some other things, like tidying up the center of the island because it was a mess and it was really starting to bother me. So I moved a few things around and boom, look at this, look at how much better this looks. And yeah, the villager hut thingy's still there, but it's just another one of those temporary structures that's going to be there for a while. And you also may be wondering what happened to the cobblestone generator, and to that I say, I built an underground platform to store the cobblestone generator, storage, and water source on. So yeah, it keeps the top pretty tidy, and it's pretty cozy down there. And now with all that being done, I took a few swings at the mob farm, ended up getting attacked by a zombie, and then went to bed. Okay, now these are some busy days coming up. You see, I decided to go into the nether and have a look around because my render distance was now higher than it was earlier. And I could see all of the extra nether islands all around me, so I thought it'd be a good idea and worth my while to head over to the fortress to see if there's any cool stuff over there. And when I finally got there, I was expecting like a blaze spawner, but actually all I got was glowstone and nether wart. There really wasn't much else here. It was quite disappointing actually. 
So I took all the stuff, headed back home, and put it all in a chest. Now I got to work on getting the second villager, so I'd need a second witch and a second zombie villager. So after a while of killing at the spawner, I got a witch and a zombie villager to spawn at the same time, but unfortunately I had to kill the zombie. But uh, it's fine though, because I eventually trapped the witch whilst almost dying to it. And after that I went to bed because I didn't really want to risk losing my current, like, villager villager to a zombie to then end up being a zombie villager again. But in the morning it was straight back to bonking the mobs at the spawner until finally I got a zombie villager to spawn. So I broke him out, trapped him in a boat and started the process of curing him when I realised that I didn't have any gapples left. So I headed into the nether to grab some and then almost died to this pigman right here which was very, very scary. Anyways, I farmed some gold and now we can finally cure him. And after literally all day of trying to get a weakness potion and failing miserably, I went to bed and continued on in the morning, when finally I cured the villager and now I just had to kill some time. So I harvested and cooked up some more of my potatoes and then went to bed. So for the next few days I got up and I checked on my villager who was now completely cured and ready to start work. So I quickly made him an armorer and started the long and tedious process of leveling up both the villagers and collecting as many emeralds as possible. So I got to work on harvesting and growing crops for the next few days whilst trading with the villagers at any given opportunity. And I also expanded the temporary farm a little bit too. Oh, and uh, Wandering Trader spawned, so that was kind of cool, I guess. He really didn't have anything I wanted, but hey, it gets lonely up here in this, like, harsh void. You know, it's nice to have a friend every so often. Anyways, by day 40, I got some insane trades for diamond armor for one emerald. I couldn't believe it, so uh, I snatched it all up, and boom, we're now fully kitted out. I mean, just look at this man right here. He can't even touch me. Look at this. <laughs> Anyways, after purchasing my extreme drip, I uh, dug up all the dirt, and I went to bed. Because on the following days, I worked more on the expansion because, well, uh, I really wanted to get these villagers at home so that I could breed them some more and get more trades for diamond tools and weapons. So, uh, yeah, all I did for two days was break wood and place wood and, well, looked damn good whilst doing it. And by the middle of day 43, uh, the third layer was finally finished and the island was starting to get pretty big. Anyways, I got to work on replanting some of the trees and planning out where I wanted to put these villagers. And on day 44, I got to work on building them their home, which isn't really a home, it's kind of like an area that turned out to look like a prison cell, but it'll, it'll do for now, okay? It'll do for now. Anyways, now I need to go and grab these annoying hmm -y boys and uh, bring them to their new house, which is, well, a lot easier said than done, because for some reason, they don't like to move. As a matter of fact, they didn't move at all, I had to forcefully push them all the way there. Eventually, by the end of the day, I had both of them in there, and then I went and made three beds. One for each of the two villagers, and one for my soon-to-be third villager, if they even decided to move. Anyways, I spent the night with them in the prison. So, on day 45, when I woke up, I noticed that my chests were extremely messy again, so I decided to spend all day just tidying them up and organising everything properly, because there was a lot of stuff just all over. So, yeah, it was kind of a boring day, but I think now is the correct time to tell you about this video's sponsor. It, it's you, you know, you, you there just sat there watching this video, laid there watching this video, it's you. Uh, if you enjoy it, please drop a like and subscribe, I greatly, greatly appreciate it, and it really goes a long way. Anyways, back to day like 46. Anyways, back on track, on day 46, I got to work on breeding the villagers by giving them food and a little farm, so hopefully the next time I come over here, there's three villagers, not two. Anyways, after that, I bridged over to another nether island to see if there was anything of interest over there, and whilst I was bridging over, I spotted a chest on the island. But when I got there, it was just a nether version of the Skyblock Island, so uh, I stole the lava bucket and left, vowing never to return to another one of these islands ever again. Then I decided to farm some gold for some gapples that I could actually use instead of having to be used to cure villagers. And everything was going good until I got bonked a couple times and got a little bit scared, but other than the bonks, I was just kind of sat here chilling out, just farming gold for 20 minutes. And on day 47, I returned to the overworld and crafted myself a load of gapples that I could actually use on myself, like I said, instead of curing villagers. And, well, on that topic of villagers, let's go check on them. Ah, still no child, but that's okay. I spent the rest of the day smelting down all my iron armor and stuff to make into nuggies that I then made into a pickaxe and mined cobble all night. Because, well, here's a pretty big time jump. You see, I really wasn't happy with how the island looked, and I really wanted to expand it some more so that I could build some actual structures on it. So I got to work on doing some massive expansions for five days. I worked tirelessly, mining and placing cobblestone and wood, and gradually making the island bigger and bigger, until now I present to you the newly improved island. Just just look how massive this thing is now. All, all I need to do is just add builds and farms and stuff. That's it. it it's, it's too big now. 
And on day 54, I got to work on building my farm again, and this time I separated my carrots and potatoes into their own sections so that I didn't get any mixed up. And I don't really need to plant any wheat because, well, I can't farm it with the villagers anyways, so th th there's really no point to it. Anyways, after the farms were done, I got to work on a villager trading hall, and well, it was kind of more of like a hut area thing than a hall, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give them a better place to live. Uh, but I also wanted to build it out of dark oak, so uh, I made my way over to the dark oak island, but by the time I got over there, it was already getting pretty dark, so uh, I quickly grabbed the wood and a few saplings and cautiously headed back home and went to bed. And on day 55, I got to work on building the villagers their new home. And, well, I didn't have a clear design in mind, so it was kind of just all over the place, and I kept removing and replacing loads of blocks, and it, it was just kind of messed up until the morning of the next day when I had a basic design of the place laid out. But to continue on any more work with it, I needed some glass, and I knew that there was a wandering trader selling some red sand, but I think he despawned now because I can't find him anywhere. So I didn't really know what to do about the glass situation until I remembered that librarians can trade glass for emeralds. So uh, I went to check on the villagers to see if I could actually, you know, do this. And, well, they still hadn't bred, so I gave them more food and took my anger out on the mob farm. And kind of just waited around for the rest of the day, just hoping for them to breed. And, well, after waiting out most of the day, I went back to check on them before going to bed, and they had finally bred. But now I had to wait for it to grow up. So I headed to bed and spent the next couple of days farming again to stack up on some emeralds so that I can get the trades flowing and hopefully get some glass soon. And well, I did some trading whilst waiting too because it'd be a waste of my time considering that they can only refresh up to twice a day. And on the morning of day 59, I went to check on the villagers as soon as I got up and the child was now a fully grown adult. All I needed now was a bookshelf. And the only way to get one of those is through sugarcane and leather. So uh, I went and planted some sugarcane down and then went to the gold farm to try and get some trades going with a piglin in hopes of getting some. So after a while of farming out these poor piggy boys, uh, I ended up with enough gold to start trading with these two lovely fellows right here who would happily supply me with a fire resistance potion and five leather, so we had just enough for a bookshelf. So after my success in the nether, I once again returned home when I realized that I already had 17 leather in my farming chest. Dear God, I'm so blind. On day 61, we were still waiting for the sugar cane to grow, and sadly, you can't bone meal it, so I guess we just wait. But no, I was actually quite productive and built myself a house while waiting for the sugar cane to grow, but uh, I couldn't finish it again because, well, I needed glass. But uh, yeah, even without the glass, you can kind of see the design close enough, and it still looks kind of cool. But it is a very basic house, but eh, what can you really expect? It's Skyblock. Anyways, by the morning of day 64, I finally had enough sugarcane to make the paper, to make the books, to make the bookshelf, to make the lectern, to then finally make my third villager a librarian. And then it was time for me to start trading to get my sand, but uh, after most of the day's trading, I ran out of emeralds, but I actually did end up getting a mending tray completely by accident, so that was pretty cool. Anyways, I continued trading on the following day because I really needed this glass. And I know you could say, hey, poppers, just go to the island with the glass on it, with the cacti and stuff. Well, I I'd love to, but it won't be enough glass. All right, I need a lot of this stuff. Anyways, more trading later, and well, I maxed him out, and guess what? He didn't trade glass for anything. So I openly admit defeat and went to bed very upset. So on day 66, I got up and immediately headed over to the sand island and grabbed every single grain of sand there was. And then I took it back home and smelted it down when I got the achievement for smelting it that made me go and check the achievement book. And well, would you look at that? Husks drop sand, do they? Okay. After reading that, I went to bed, and on day 67, I ran over to the desert island to start expanding it out, to try and get some husks spawning tonight, because, well, I've never farmed these things before, so I don't really know what to expect, so uh, I sat in a little shed until nightfall, and, well, not a single husk spawned all night, so uh, at this point, I was feeling pretty defeated, so I just headed home. Now, on the morning of day 68, I wasn't giving up, and I was determined to get sand by trading again. So, uh, I went over to the villagers, I gave them another bed, and I gave them more food, when I realized that my island was actually way too big to build stuff on. I really don't know why I wanted it this big. But it was starting to become a problem, because things started looking very desolate and empty. 
But anyways, um, I ended up seeing in the achievements that you could actually go to the end. So uh, I went back into the nether and had a look around the fortress area again for no reason other than a little birdie, aka the site of the map, told me that there was a portal on top of it. And well, would you look at that? There was a portal on top of it. And after finding the end portal, I returned home and threw away a billion gold swords that were in my inventory and then went and checked on the villagers that hadn't bred just yet. So I decided to spend the rest of the day replacing the cobblestone in the center of my island with wood because it had fit the kind of theme that I was going for better. So on the next day, I went and checked on the villagers and hey, would you look at that? We have another one. Now all we need to do is have it grow. Anyways, after the villager visit, I noticed that my island was now burning, so uh, I went and put a stop to it before things got really out of hand, and well, why is the cobblestone generator always the thing that sets everything on fire? I, I, the awful contraption. Anyways, after the fire incident, this is when I realized that I really did not like how my island looked at all, and I wanted to completely redo the whole entire thing from start to all of it, just gone, alright? Gone. So, after waiting for my villagers to grow and making him a tool boy, I traded for some diamond tools and got to work on tearing down all of my hard work up to this point, just to rebuild it better. And, well, I'll let the footage roll for you now, but in the last 100 days video, 100 days in one block sky block, I built everything in a square modular kind of island design. Um, so I thought this time, instead of doing it in squares, I'll do it in circles instead. So, uh, yeah, by the time everything was torn down, I started a circle around my mob grinder, and that became my main circular island. That was then very quickly followed by a tree farm island, and then a nether portal island, and then finally a villager island that was actually very easy to keep them from getting out, and from things going, it was just easy to keep them in there, okay? And also, I kind of like how it came out. It's a little bit square, but it looks pretty good. Anyways, after the success of the villager island, I went and made the cobblestone generator its own island. That way, it wouldn't be burning anything down anytime soon. After the cobble island was done, I made a storage slash base of operations island, and then uh, after that, I made a mushroom island, because why not? They look cool, and why would I not want giant mushrooms? Oh ho, would you look at that? It's another island. What will it be? That's right, it's Pond Island. Why? Because it looks cool, and... Well, I'm trying to make up for how bad the last build was. Anyways, next up is possible enchantment table island, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get an enchantment table because of just a lack of obsidian. So it's kind of just an island with bookshelves on it for now. Anyways, now that everything was finally torn down and rebuilt, I removed the platform from underneath and got to work on bridging over to the jungle island to grab the saplings to then add to the tree farm. And then I did the exact same thing for the birch island, I went and grabbed the saplings, brought them back home, planted them down, and uh, yeah, there we go, I went to bed. Now, on the next couple days, I headed back into the nether because I decided it was time to start work on getting potions, and well, to do that, I'd need blaze rods and blaze powder. So, I ran over to the nether fortress chunk and set up a little blaze spawning platform, and well, it really didn't take long for our first blaze to spawn, however, I had to kill it over the void, so uh, no rod for me. But that's okay though, because two spawned shortly afterwards, and now we have our first blaze rod. After a while of farming blaze later, I finally had enough rods to head home and start brewing. But not really, because I still needed the nether wall farm, so uh, I grabbed some food and I headed back into the nether to start farming some gold to trade with the piglins to get some soul sand. Which made me realise that I probably shouldn't have thrown away the stuff that I got traded to me earlier, but hey, it is what it is. Anyways, I, I traded with the piggies until I got a decent amount of soul sand, and I also got a few water bottles, which were obviously going to be very useful for me to make potions in them, because, well, I have a very little amount of sand. Anyways, then I returned home and sorted out my stuff. And now, on day 88, I made my nether wart farm island, and don't worry, I'm not copying the exact same builds I did last time, I, I made two nether biome islands last time, so I'm not doing that again. Anyways, the farm was done, so while I waited for them to grow, I made a brewing stand and set everything else up. Now, all I needed was slow falling, instant health, and maybe swiftness, but that's not necessary for the fight. So, I decided to stay up all night because I needed phantoms to start coming after me so that I could actually get a phantom membrane for slow falling potions. So, after staying up all night, on day 89, I built myself a melon farm because I would really need glistening melons to make instant health potions. So, one very useless melon farm later, and now we only needed the phantom membranes and the nether warp. So, it was basically just a waiting game. So I kind of just decided to set my mob grinder for a day whilst waiting for the phantoms to spawn to try and get some enchanted bows to combine into an even better bow. You, you kind of know how this goes at this point. And I also may or may not have killed a load of iron golems to get enough iron to make an anvil. You know, that's up for debate. Whether I did, whether I didn't, I, I, there's no proof. Anyways, by this point, I was literally like four iron off of getting the anvil. So uh, I grabbed all my gold and headed back into the nether to try and trade with piglins to, uh, to get some. 
but apparently this piglin was done with my business and tried scamming me by running away with my gold, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared. How, how strange. Anyways, uh, more trading later and I finally had enough nuggies to make the final ingot I needed. So I headed home, I grabbed all my bows, I crafted my anvil, I then combined all my bows into an even stronger bow, and then went and traded for some more armor from the villagers, which I then combined until I ran out of XP to do so. So then I headed back to the gold farm to get more XP because it was faster than farming out the grinder and then almost died to this guy right here that was very, very scary. So I just kind of panicked and kept slapping him until he died. But anyways, after repeating the process of just going to the gold farm and enchanting my armor, it was finally all upgraded and now all I needed to do was make the potions. So I went and harvested my nether wart, started cooking up some awkward potions, and then I harvested my melon to make some glistening melon to then make my instant health potions, which I then immediately upgraded and made into splash potions. And now, all I was waiting for was phantoms that should come tonight. And, well, they did. So I killed them, I took their membranes, and then I went to bed. And on day 94, I woke up, I brewed my final potions, and now it was time for me to fight the dragon. So, without any further ado, let's go. So we get into the end and I immediately make a run for the middle, sniping out one or maybe two towers in the process. Then I head over and start towering up the biggest pillar, and from there I took out all but two of the crystals, and then proceeded to tower up and destroy the last two. Now, it's time for the dragon. So I sniped at him for a while with the bow until he came into perch and then I gave him a good old bonking with my axe but he wasn't happy about it because he ended up throwing me halfway across the end and then flew away. A few more bow shots later and he came into perch for the last time and well just like that the dragon was dead. Easy clap once again. Anyways, now you know what time it is, that's right, it's time to go and get the elytra and oh my god I hope it doesn't take 10 years like it did last time. Whoop, and now we're in the end cities, and well, I searched for a whole maybe two minutes before I found a city, and well, it had a ship, so I was extremely relieved that I wouldn't have to spend like hours in here again, so uh, yeah, I ran straight up to it, getting beaten left, right, center, upwards, downwards, backwards, everywhere by shulkers, until I reached the stairs to the ship, and then once again, using the shulker levitation, I jumped over, ran under the deck and grabbed my elytra, as well as some pretty good rolled tools. There were, there were some pretty good stuff down there. Anyways, after the final achievement of this journey was made, I quickly made myself out of the end cities, back to the main island, grabbed the dragon egg and jumped back through the portal to get back home. Once I was back to my home islands, I uh, sorted out my inventory and gave the dragon egg to the villagers because I was feeling quite generous. And then on day 97, I headed back into the end to grab some obsidian to finish upgrading the nether portal island. But, uh, well, it, it didn't really get upgraded that much. In matter of fact, I thought it looked quite weird. But then finally, on the final two days, uh, you remember all that time ago when I tried fishing in the little 2x2 area and I couldn't? Well, I decided to spend my final two days doing something that I couldn't do before. I ended up just fishing for the final two days. That, that's all I did. I had no reason to, or I had no goal to get anything out of it. I just wanted to use the fishing rod that I made all that time ago. And finally, on day 100, we've done it again. We've survived another 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. And I also just want to apologize for this video being a little bit shorter than my normal 100 days videos. I've been quite ill while working on it, and I'm also working on a second project alongside it, so stay tuned for updates from that. Anyways, thank you all so very much for watching. If you want more content from me between 100 days videos, I stream quite regularly over on Twitch. And if you want any updates on that, then follow me on Twitter, both a link down in the description below and on screen now. But anyways, I love and appreciate you all. Stay safe till next time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Adios.